Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another exciting installment of the Grow Your Brand series here on the Top 16 Unicorn Brands Awards, brought to you by Standard Bank. This is our last episode for our Grow Your Brand series. Can you believe it? It's been a, a six week um, filled with, you know, gems. We brought in the big guns in the industry to come share some knowledge um, with us as entrepreneurs as we're journeying um, in, in, in this uh, world of business so just to recap we covered immensely uh, so many topics in in the past um, six weeks six weeks um it all kicked off in terms of how do you establish um your brand and make it you know um, a successful and lucrative brand then we also touched on um compliance uh, which is a very important part you know of your business then of course we also had think we, we also had a chat all things digital, you know. Um, if you want to know how to grow your brand online and how to um, make those sales, then we talked scaling and expansion. And today we are talking about those soft moves, the soft skills that we all need as entrepreneurs that we often overlook, you know, because we think we are talented in whatever space um, we operate in and we negate. You know some of those um things that make you know life a bit easier the relationships the networking and then and i'm not gonna share all those things because we have our expert um, speakers um that will be you know dropping those gems in that particular um topic before we welcome them i uh, just want to also remind you that of course the top 16 youth on brands awards are happening on the 14th i mean on the 15th of june and they will be preceded by a two-day festival of youth-owned brands, the first of its kind in South Africa, where we'll be housing the largest number of youth-owned brands at the richest square mile in Africa, that is in Centin, ladies and gents. If you haven't got your ticket yet, you are going to regret it because we've got an amazing lineup of speakers, we've got an amazing lineup of entertainers, we've got amazing brands that will be showcasing on both... Um, two days at the at the Santin Convention Center. So without wasting any time, um, allow me to welcome our guest speakers, Wendy Silignane, as well as Munei uh, Chiobe. Am I right? Yes. Um, I'm not going to do any introductions. Um, they're just going to briefly tell us who they are, what they're about, and how they ended up where they are today. So I'm going to start with you, Wendy. If you may just please um, give us a, a, brief, uh, a background. brief background. Thank you, Pat. Um, first of all, I'd like to, to acknowledge, um, uh, you know, being invited in this platform and also being part of the, the judges for the top 16 youth-owned brands. Uh, yes. It's such an honor to work with you. And then also just to say, you know, you're doing incredible work uh, within uh, the continent of Africa because youth are not as celebrated as, as um, you know, as they should. And this is a w one way of encouraging them to, to, you know, to push forward in whatever that they're doing. So a bit about myself. Uh, my name is Wendy Selignan. I come from the Eastern Cape, uh, currently residing in Johannesburg. And I am an entrepreneur, uh, I'm a connector, I'm a futurist, uh, I'm an activator, and I'm an intellect and a contributor, and I'm very focus-driven. And I start with that, with those when I introduce myself, because that's, those are the things that make me who I am. And all the others are hats that I wear. So I'm a social entrepreneur and a founder and director of Virtue Business Solutions and table of influence. And the recent hat I wear uh, is being the director and franchisee for um, Mini Boss Business School in uh, Johannesburg, which is an international business school for kids between the ages of six to 19. And I'm a woman empowerment advocate, um, we do, which is Women Entrepreneurship Day organization, uh, global ambassador for the Eastern Cape province. I'm an international speaker. Um, I'm also, um, you know, I've played role in different leadership roles within BM Black Management Forum and uh, Business Women Association and many others. 
I've studied towards PR, uh, public relations, and currently on a journey of uh, strategic brand communications. And I have an interest in neuroscience coaching, which the topic that we're about today is networking and building on those soft skills, which is quite exciting for me. So that's who I am in a nutshell. Wendy, you make it so difficult to come after you. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sitting, I'm like, oh, do I just slide down my chair? <laughs> and good evening to all the viewers tonight. Um, and thank you so much for the top 16 uh, youth owned brands for allowing us to share this space and uh, to share part of our journeys. Um, my name is Monet, and uh, I come from an opposite direction from Wendy. I come all the way from Limpopo in Venda. Um, okay. Currently, uh, describing myself, I am a technopreneur. I am a psychometrist. Uh, I am a partnerships manager at uh, UCT Online High School. I am the director of the board at Mustard Seed Foundation. Um, Many people would say to me, you are not an entrepreneur, you're a connector, because it's all about connecting, it's all about partnerships for me, it's all about collaboration. And I think the, the topic today for me, again, I would have loved to be in last week's one, talking about scaling and how do we help young people to scale their businesses. It, it's one of my favorite topics right now in the country, because we are all talking about entrepreneurship, but we're not talking about scalability. Uh, so it's quite interesting that there was a session. I would have loved to join it. Uh, today, skills, I think very interesting, uh, some of the things that I'll be sharing today. Um, I am a founder of two tech companies. One is called Careers Building Blocks, which focuses on building psychometric tools to assess young people when it comes to career guidance, career development. And lately, I found myself researching a lot around entrepreneurial skills and the soft skills that young people need uh, before they embark in the journey of entrepreneurship. So quite interesting and quite ironic that I'm sitting here today. And the second startup that I'm really fond of, it's called Startup Lab. Um, I realized in South Africa, we are not collecting enough data to inform decisions around how we train entrepreneurs. So Startup Lab is one of the businesses that I founded and quite fascinating that we are talking about this today. So. Thanks, Pet. Hi, everybody. Apologies for that. Pat has just um, had load shedding. The beauty about um, what we do is there's agility. <laughs> so I'm just going to hold the fort for him whilst he tries and sorts that out. But you guys have spoken about really important stuff. And, and why I was saying I think the, the beauty about the expansion is that's that's now you know when you are three four or whenever it is within your business life cycle when you then start looking at how to expand but you do definitely need to consider it from the start but now there are soft skills of which you know as much as you have the technical skill you would definitely need to have um soft skills that goes with it because we sometimes assume that you know, you can just rock up. But I, I love to think of it as much like in corporate on your CV when you say competencies or MS office and and the like is 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 the same competencies you would need in terms of soft skills. And and maybe if you could share what these soft skills are, because we've spoken about soft skills and and we look at them because entrepreneurship is not the normal journey that you have, you know, where you mm -hmm. just um you know, you, you know that it's three years, this is what happens and the succession plan is quite clear. It isn't. And and what are the skills maybe going to yourself, Wendy, that, that one would need to possess, especially when they're considering the journey of entrepreneurship? And Pat is back, so he's going to continue with this conversation now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bumi. Um, I think for in my personal journey, uh, some of the soft skills that have helped me has been uh, one, being able to network and being able to build relationships with, um, with the people that I meet. Uh, because if you're in business and you are just sitting with your project or you're sitting with your business and you're not talking to people, then how are, you, how are people going to know about what you're doing? 
So, and everything that I have achieved up to today has been exactly that networking and talking to people. And some people would say, ah, oh, you like to go to conferences. And I say, <laughs> where do I meet people? <laughs> if I don't go to conferences, I'm not going to be able to meet people. And when I go to a conference, you go with an objective to say, okay, who is there? Who is going? And who are the speakers there? And who do I want to talk to who is aligned with what I am doing? You know, so, so you go there with an objective and you make sure that you, you achieve your objective when you are there. And otherwise, it's, it, it's just a waste of time. So um, I, I would say networking and I would say critical thinking. Those are some of the soft skills that, uh, 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 that an entrepreneur has to possess being able to analyze, being able to unpack things and being able sometimes, you know, we, we, we respond to things or challenges in a way, you know, sometimes you respond because you, you say, I'm the customer here. So you want to respond in a way that's, you know, a bit arrogant and, and you miss an opportunity to say, okay, how can I leverage on this, on, on this you know, a, a situation that is in front of me? To benefit my business, so so being able to 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 think creatively as well, I think that's an important uh, a soft skill that um, that an entrepreneur can possess. So I don't want to finish everything. I think uh, Mune may have something to say as well. Yeah, uh, Mune, thank you for that, uh, Wendy. Cool, thanks. Uh, I mean, Wendy, you, you're spot on. I, I mean, I normally say to young people that I engage with that um, relationships are your greatest resource because if you can't build those relationships, you can't move your business. Um, and I think the mistakes that young people do is to sit with their ideas and to sit with their businesses and not network and get in the, into the right spaces and talk to the right people. I mean, uh, someone was laughing at me uh, two weeks back, if not a week back. I was attending uh, an event in the uh, Apartheid Museum, and he was like, well, what are you doing in the museum? You're an entrepreneur. I was like, I'm connecting. <laughs> I'm, I'm networking with people. But I think most importantly for me, it's your startup skills, you know? Um, many people or many young people are defaulting to entrepreneurship, of course, and given the challenges that we have in the country, and they want to start businesses. And you find that most of them are lacking skills like your normal startup skills. You need to uh, be able to be very boundaryless and be protein about what you do. So I think in an interpersonal perspective, I think uh, being able to um, problem solve, being able to connect, being able to collaborate with people. And uh, for me, it's quite important that we also talk a bit more about the mental health around entrepreneurship, your initiating and resilience you know um it's difficult out there it's it's the jungles out there you know if you are not resilient um many young people give up or they end up not even pursuing their dreams because it's tough and they end up give up uh, giving up so for me uh, i come from a psychology background so the mental health element of it for me is always quite critical to say that mindset needs to be right you know you need to have the uh, growth mindset Mindset. You need to make sure that you start adapting to your to all these mindsets that are being developed. You know, uh, your entrepreneurial entrepreneurial mindset, your digital mindset. So if we start with the head, then the technical is easy to deal with because you're dealing with somebody who, or rather, you have somebody who's already prepared themselves that entrepreneurship in, involves bootstrapping. You know, uh, you need to take money out of your pocket and start. And that comes with resilience when you start um, realizing that I can't afford that car. I need to let it go so that I can push my business. So the mindset has to be right. So for me, I fall more on the psychological aspect of the soft skills that I think we need to be very cognizant of and uh, build those skills because they are very important in today's market. Uh, you're on mute, Pet. You are uh, mute, Pet. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. I think it's great that we highlighted, you know, all these important skills that entrepreneurs need to have. But I guess now, if we can spend some time um, unpacking each one of them, like, for example, um, 
when you kicked off by saying the ability to be able to build networks, you know, the ability to um, just go out there, be on the streets, meet new people, and, and, and. And we all know that these are not skills that come natural to, to mm -hmm. many of us, you know. Uh, we have to sort of be intentional about it. We have to learn about, about, about them. And, yeah, how do I approach a stranger, you know? Yes, I'm at a networking event, for example, hypothetically speaking. There's so many people. There's CEOs, CMOs, and all these other O's um, attending. <laughs> and, 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 um, and, and other people, not only people with big titles, but how do, you, how do I build the confidence to walk up to someone and just introduce, introduce myself? Because I guess that's where it all starts. How do how do we start building our networks? And perhaps I'm being too narrow uh, about my question, but you can touch on other aspects on how you can build um, networking skills. Okay, um, thank you, Pat, for for, for that question. Um, I know a lot of people would say, "Ah, Mira, I'm, I'm an introvert. I'm an introvert. I don't know how yeah. to speak to people. I don't know how to approach people." But if you're in business, your your market is people. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, one yeah. way or the other, you're not selling to chairs, you're selling to people. So yeah. you have to develop that um, you know, you know, you know, that character to say, look, I may be an introvert, but I need to speak. I need to speak to people. So one mm. of the things I would I would say or share is to be able to understand wh who are you. What do you do? You practice this, like you literally practice. This is who I am. This is what I do. And this is where uh, I am going. And these are the resources that I need to, go, to get to where I'm going. And this is like your, I would say, your, your, your elevator pitch, basically. You practice your elevator pitch. I, always, I would say if I were to meet Richard Branson, in an elevator, like literally, just yeah. me and him in an elevator. I must know what to say from, sure. you know, from the first floor That's to close. the second floor. I must sure. know what to say within that short space of time because I won't get that opportunity again. So that's gotcha. exactly, yeah. So that's exactly, you know, what it means to be able to sell yourself, to sell your skills, to sell your business. Um, to anyone that you meet. And it doesn't matter whether they are the CEO or they are you know, another fellow startup uh, because mm. you never know that that fellow startup may be your next client. So you must That's be able to share you know, about what you do and, and sometimes mm. why you do what you do because, because, because some people, you know, they don't like to be sold to, you know, sold to, sure. but when you tell them why you do what you do, then you are capturing them. You, 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 you are telling them your why, basically, uh, why you started the business and so forth. Yeah. So there are different ways in doing it. And I mean, in my experience, I've hosted, and which is what I do under Virtual Business Solutions, I host networking events um, for, for, for entrepreneurs for that mere reason of connecting, collaborating, and also yeah. doing business together. And also getting access to, to, to information about where to get funding, where to get uh, business development services and so forth. So it is within those platforms. And sometimes you do some, some uh, activities like, you know, talk to the person next to you, get to know them. Because in, a, in about five minutes, I'm going to come back and ask you what they do and not ask you what you do. So... <laughs> So being able also to listen to other people. And yeah, so I, I think let me let me edit there. Are uh, you still with us, Pat? I think Pat froze. Maybe let me take it away uh, while we wait okay. for him to come back. I think you, you yeah. are spot on again, uh, Wendy, you know. Um, and, and it boils down to really and i think maybe i must apologize that i'll maybe go towards maybe the psychological part of it mostly because mm -hmm. I, I was told when i started this entrepreneurship journey that the very same way you approach girls should be the same way you should approach <laughs> your, your next person 
<laughs> I like that. Me. Yeah. It stuck with me because it meant I needed to go back and learn etiquettes around getting attention and getting mm -hmm. somebody to listen to you. And I think mm -hmm. it's when people then start building up on their confidence because confidence is all about making sure that you can walk up to the person and talk to them. And I think mm -hmm. for most young people, um, and I mean, funny story with um, Pumi, we were um, judges, they at vets for the EDHE competition. And I had to stop two young, young entrepreneurs who wanted to present their pitches because they were shivering. And you can tell it's uh, confidence. So being mm -hmm. able to read the room, for me, mm -hmm. is always important. And again, networking is not always about if it's an event, there's five, five CEOs. And you start, you go to the CEO. No, sometimes it's reading the room, finding your, your your person that you can start with, and you build up that confidence until you can get to the CEO. And I think the mistake mm -hmm. that we make is that we think that networking is about I must walk in there, I must run to the first person uh, who's the biggest shot in the room, and I network. No, sometimes it's about having the etiquette is to understand the environment, listen to the mm -hmm. conversation, listen to the room, and actually build up your confidence so that when you walk up to the next person, uh, I've spoken to, to uh, Wendy, she's told me who she is, she's told me a bit about her business, the next person you go to, do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Who are you? What do you do? Um, what opportunities do you have available, right? By the time mm -hmm. you get to those people that everybody wants to talk to, you've done your elevated pitch with three, four, five people prior to them, meaning that chances mm -hmm. are you've boosted your own confidence. You go to them and you can pitch yourself quite quick. And I always say to people that, look, you need to be able to have interpersonal skills to actually sell yourself before you even go to the next person. Smiling, being able to just smile at people, you know? You can't want mm -hmm. people to listen to you and talk to you while you're grumpy, no. Um, people know I'm always smiling, I'm forever smiling because I want people to receive me as warm, not mm. somebody receiving me as cold. You know, so I think it's oh mostly about <laughs> who you are. And I mean, sometimes you are there in those events, they even dished up and you're hungry. And compose yourself and just fake it until <laughs> you make it. You know, so. Until you get your plate. <laughs> until you get your plate, you know, because that's what's important. Interpersonal skills for me yeah. are really difficult. And I think those are the skills that we need to teach young entrepreneurs how to easily get into a room. And you would show me and Wendy know each other, you know, because you become warm to people. You lighten up so that people can be um, open to engaging with Receptive, you. So for me, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it I, 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 like, yeah mm -hmm. I like the point you are raising, uh, Monet, is in, you know, your, your energy. And you're bringing your own energy into the room. Yes. And this is mm -hmm. one of the things that we've, we've, uh, we've I've come to learn that in any room, there's there's an energy. So when you walk into that room, you must acknowledge yourself that you are here and you acknowledge the energy that is in the room as well. Uh, but also if you want to draw people into your own you know, energy circuit, if I can call it that, that is when you're wanting them to buy into what you're doing. So you must be able to, mm -hmm. to learn that skill of how do I get them on the side, how do I get them to listen? How do I get them to move from their own energy, in, you know, a, a circuit to my own energy space and be able to, to engage and relate uh, 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 in, in that way? So, so that's, that's one. And one of the things that um, we used to do is to, to have those uh, opportunities where, uh, you know, you do your elevator pitch you know, you get an opportunity to do an elevator pitch in front of other people. And you begin, those are some of the masterclasses that we, we host. You begin to learn to, to, to talk in front of people and, and to be able to, to, to sell your business and to sell yourself and your skills. So, which is why when I introduced myself, I acknowledged who I am first before many other hats that I wear. So the, the things that make me uh, Wendy before I am the founder or, and director of X and, and Y business. So, so thank you for, for raising that point. 
So you, you guys know, have both. Sorry, Mane, you go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to just say to, to, to Wendy, you know, this uh, speed connect, speed dating events, you know, are, mm -hmm. are, are critical. Mane, uh, I don't I know why all your things are related to quartering <laughs> a lady or speed dating. <laughs> I want you to write in the group there to say that now my stress is if I've never gone to a boy to say hi, I like you. This is very stressful, I must be honest. But please go ahead. Yeah, I think it's something so powerful. I remember um when I was a career services manager, I wanted to start a program for high school kids, Speed Connect. I'd called it speed dating, but it doesn't work well, you know. You're working with kids, but we had to yeah. change it to speed connect. Because there is something about concepts like that, because there is agency in it, right? You need to quickly connect with people and you need to quickly align with energies, you know? Teaching young people, if you want to, if you want to go for an interview and you want to sell yourself in an interview, you need to do it in the first 10, 20 minutes, you know? Speed connect, connect with people quickly, connect with their energies quickly. That's what I'm all about. I believe that if we can have entrepreneurs who know how to present themselves, before their businesses, then you have entrepreneurs who can sell you their businesses because they know who they are, they know exactly yeah. what they want, and they know how to interact with people. Yeah, and I think from a young state or young age, I think we take for granted your debating, we take for granted your 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 chesses because it's how you think. How do you strategize? Because the chess is, is what's my next move, you know, to win. That that's what you're you're doing. When you're looking at Toastmasters, for example, it is how do I present myself? I remember having to present a a history thing, and and I'm known to try things. I must be honest, probably in my primary and high school years. Um, but for me to be as scared as I am there with your speech notes there, but you know you keep going, you keep trying, and and it goes back to what you're saying, Wendy, is that. When you're in that room, it's the acknowledgement of self because you're saying that there are so many other people probably. I mean, I'm sitting with Wendy and Monet. I'm just like, now, where must I start or what do I even say? But once you recognize who you are and what you're here to bring, then you're able to kind of own your, your little bubble, you know, and kind of then, like Monet says, I mean, when I met him, he definitely was as jolly as he is, you know, <laughs> the whole big smile and so forth, which is quite welcoming, um, you know, because there are those people where you're like, you don't even start saying anything. But I mean, you guys have had this experience, um, an experience journey. What would you say, you know, were your, your key points of having to work around in terms of the soft skills? You know, what did you say that it came easy as OND, you know, I am a talkative person, I can I can hold a conversation. Or maybe I'm not a talkative person, so I had to actually adapt, you know, given the journey that I'm on or given the industry, to be honest, because entrepreneurship is an industry, um, you know, that I'm in. Um, what would you say are maybe two points that you're saying, maybe communication, um, discipline, um, you know, what what is it that you're saying was quite, quite difficult, but you had to kind of have to adapt and, and learn? And maybe we can start with Manet. interesting question I, I mean i remember and it goes back i think for me when i started working when i entered the world of work i'm a very confident person when i know the environment but in different environments i'm a different person so Absolutely. i used to be very fearful of talking you know and engaging oh. people exactly back to the previous comment uh, topic around connecting and reading the room and i remember my previous boss said to me you are a brand and if you want to be a consultant, people need to know that you are a brand and you sure. need to be able to present yourself quick enough to people because you are here to sell a product, right? So for me, I had to learn how to quickly present myself. And, and it started with simple things like dressing appropriately, you know, uh, getting into a space dressed Absolutely. well and looking presentable, Absolutely. you know. And I had to start learning about smiling, you know, and being warm. If I show you the picture of my youngest daughter, you would laugh because she always looks like she, she's a bit angry. And that's how I was, you know? We serious. <laughs> we serious. Yeah. And I yeah. had to train my muscle to smile, you know, because it's important soft skills for connecting with people. And I think the second one, which is, uh, even today I got a very interesting comment, it's presenting, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Presentations are a killer when it comes to entrepreneurs. Uh, many people get into the right doors and they walk out without anything because they can't present uh, their ideas. They can't present their stories. 
So mm. I, I make it a point that before I even pitch to you, my presentation itself should speak to you. Before I even go through it, you should actually just wait for me to do the blab and tell me I was sold in the slide. It's yeah. important to learn presentation skills. It's not just about doing the slides. It's also about how you pitch it, how you... The delivery. The body, you know, the storyline behind it. So those are the two things that I think for me, if I had to learn and I think I do them very well right now. Okay. Sure. Clearly we need somebody to teach us most. <laughs> and yourself, Wendy? Sure. Um, Monet has raised a very important point here um, on presentation and, and my favorite one, and, and that is being uh, well presented, looking mm -hmm. presentable. And you look and sharp, sharp every yes. day. Every time every I day. And, and every I do day. want to say to everybody, I was IT today, so I was not supposed to be in the front. So as your <laughs> IT or CTO, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. uh, for me, uh, for me, even a virtual meeting and mm -hmm. even during uh, during lockdown, lockdown, you know, sure. wake wake up, you know, you dress up and you dress yeah. up to sit in front of a laptop. Oh, yeah, and and you know, pajamas, no, you know, no shirt on top, and then pajamas at the bottom. At the bottom? No. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a serious occasion. So imagine, um, uh, you know, the first thing that speaks to people is how, how you look. And, and we can't run away from that. Mm. And, and I even created uh, another initiative, which I call Style My Brand, where I would help people, you know, to, to, to look presentable. I mean, if you want to build your brand, as uh, Monet was saying, you, you need to look the part. You need to to dress well. And it doesn't mean that you go and break a bank, you know, just get your, no, no, don't break your bank. We're not talking Gucci's and, and whatnots here. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, no, 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 we're not talking big brands here. We're yeah. just talking, yeah. you looking presentable, you looking neat, you yeah. having done your hair and, and everything. So, yeah. so that's one. Because that gives you confidence. If you feel good, you I mean, if you look good, you will feel good before you even say anything. Yeah. So imagine walking into a room and you're wearing confidence. I mean, you're wearing your confidence, one, but also your confidence shows in, in what, you know, how you look as well. So, and then the second point that Monet was raising is, you know, presenting. That's one thing that... Um, it, it's still a work in progress. Um, you would put together your presentation, right? And once you, you know your stuff, once you walk into that room, you, it, you it, get afraid. It, it, <laughs> you get intimidated, you know, by their faces around the table, around the boardroom. Yeah, yeah. And these people are not smiling. Eh? So it, it, it's about, and again, it's about understanding that you're walking in with your own energy. How do you break that ice? in that room when you're like, yo, you can hear a penny drop here. So mm -hmm. how do you make sure that you break that ice and you are able to deliver what you want to, what you, you have to deliver? And being able to draw people into, into that space where they're able to, to be convinced about what you're selling them, your ideas and so forth. So it's, it's really about um, understanding yourself and understanding how you beat those fears. How do you beat that fear? you know, in, in the room. And one of the things that I've come to learn is also the power of breathing. The power of breathing. <laughs> and I think take... breathe. <laughs> because yeah, I remember how... watching these points, I mean, these kids were so scared. I'm sorry to catch you, but they were so scared and mm -hmm. they were not breathing. But, and he just said, breathe. breathe. And then after that, you know, now we can hear them. Yes. You know, the, Wendy, yeah, I, I, actually, I, I actually had to, uh, I have a friend of mine who does, I think it's called the art of living. Uh, he's my colleague. And yeah. I, I used to say to him, you know, I do a lot of webinars. I get inches. I think it was when I started at UCT. I'm good with presentations, but now I have to present to 3,000 kids and I'll get inches. And I told him, like, I, I'm getting inches. I don't know why. He's like, okay. I do breathing classes. Um, 
I'm going to teach breathing techniques in the next meeting. Please join. Wow. And I went. And the power of breathing is oh. so strong because it will calm those nerves. You know, it, it gets you in tune with your body because imagine your heart, your heart is pacing and you have an important slide. That is your killer slide that you need to present and you're shivering. Yeah. You, you won't sell. So yeah. breathing yeah. looks spot on. Sure. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. It's, it, it, it works wonders. It works wonders. You breathe in, you hold it for three seconds, then you release. Yeah. Really then you, you breathe again, and Monet would uh, Monet would know more because he attends classes. <laughs> so. I had to. I had to. I had to do it. Your point, Wendy, and I think right at the start. I mean, you you, you did talk about NLP, if I'm not mistaken. Talk about uh, neuro linguistics um, programming. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a that's a very uh, it's it's a topic that I. I don't know. I'm fascinated about it, and also, yeah. You mean if you look at my library, you'll find uh, books on how the brain works and how the brain functions. And, and, and I think, Wendy, yeah, I think so, we're going to the best buddies because I think for me, neurodiversity is it's a no-brainer. We need to understand the way our brain functions, and we need to functions. understand how the next person is thinking. You know. So neurodiversity, neurolinguistics. I think you and I are going to be best buddies because <laughs> those I'm glad, are I'm glad I could have this friendship, you know, formed, I must say. <laughs> um, but well, yes, also so that you're not lost and, and, and not even to insult your intelligence. Um, NLP is a way of understanding. I think it helps with communication. So it's five senses mm -hmm. in terms of how you receive information so that mm -hmm. when you are walking into a room, you're able to read the room given those five senses. So mm -hmm. I, what I loved about it when I got certified was the fact that I understood that don't make things personal for me. It's not about you, you know, um, and, and you get to understand that people look at things differently. Other people, their words are, are, are more nasal. Um, what is it? Um, 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 how they see things is how they will describe things because they remember mm -hmm. things visually. Um, and, mm -hmm. and those little nuances that you get to learn with um, NLP and what I love about it integrated into entrepreneurship is the fact that now I get to understand and build rapport with the relationships I'm building, you know, mm -hmm. is that listening to a person a lot more intently, you're understanding, okay, no, they spoke about something, but they used a lot more of their ear senses to describe something. So when you mm -hmm. speak to them in that manner, you're actually getting to a point of building rapport subconsciously. That's basically what are the elements that can be mm -hmm. utilized with for those people, um, our guests, um, to our audience rather who are listening. So I think it, it is absolutely something I remember after sitting in that course and I was like, I just wish I could package it for people because it is it, it wasn't cheap. So I just wanted to package it just at least if every little everybody could have an opportunity to learn, you know, mm. this have access to this information. Mene, it, it, it looked like you wanted to say something. I think I think go no further, Bumi. I think you and I must sit down and talk because I think when we're building startup lab. I mean, it's, it's, it's a software. And yeah. I always say to my partners, if you are going to train someone, you need to understand their thinking. You need to understand their mindset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And from that, you need to use data to derive programs. Don't do one size fits all. And I think right. one program we came up with, with uh, in partnership with TUG was the Purpose Quest. And mm. it's based on building purposeful relationships. Absolutely. How do you turn around those sour relationships, you know? And I mean, some pe people are losing partnerships and deals because they just couldn't read the room or the relationship just started off sour. How Absolutely. do you purposefully go in and try and rebuild the rapport, you know? And I think yeah. we live in the world of technology where it's easy to now integrate neurodiversity, you know, um, into AI so that we can empower people because... If we don't start teaching purposefulness and teaching people to go out there purposefully knowing that I want to mend my relationship or I'm going there to build the face, the first face of the relationship with the person, they go there and they present something that the person that they're talking to doesn't want to hear or they don't understand. But yeah. understanding the stages of relationships, you know, and yeah. understanding where to pitch and how to pitch, I think it's absolutely important that this such work happening uh wendy and i think i'm proud that i'm sitting amongst giants who are quite keen and interested in how 
<laughs> people think and how, how the brain, how second, the brain works. Yeah. How the brain works, I, I, yeah. At the end of the day, I, I think, think because it's individuals here, for example, it's human mm. beings who are who are talking and, and your consumer is a human being, whether it's B2B, you need to speak to a human to access you know, funds or that partnership and so forth. And I think that's where the power of understanding, and that's why I'm saying, I wish I could just package it. In my mind, I was like, I'd package it and then just make it possible for them just to understand. Just, I think once you even know just a bit, you find yourself you're taken, you, you're, you're like, home. you're now listening. I want the whole, you know, session. Um, 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 and that's how I got booked, you know, into into NLP. Mane, I'm sorry, you wanted to say something. I, I wanted to say, you know, the reality about the african perspective and i always say to people when you talk entrepreneurship with me talk it within the context of our africa. absolutely yeah I, i'm not operating in europe we need to talk in the context of south africa and africa and yeah. we have key challenges when it comes to psychology because when you talk to a young person about psychologists they think ah you're taking me to vasco is you you know <laughs> people don't understand that psychology can also work in a positive way personal yeah. development personal growth yeah. all the yeah. ceos that are that are thriving they've got a coach somewhere they've done yes, psychometric they something yeah. you are letting here you need to grow here you know so changing the mindset and i like that we are using new words like neural linguistic you know uh, you know psychodynamics so quite yeah. interesting yeah yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned uh, sorry, Mbombi. you mentioned something about relationships, uh, building purposeful relationships, uh, Monet, which is one part of soft skills. How do you build those, uh, you know, um, meaningful and purposeful relationships? I always say, as you were saying, Bumi, that we are doing business with people. Whether it's a big company, that big company is owned by, I mean, is, is being led by a human being. Yeah. So if you understand how human beings and you come with that, with that understanding that you're not coming to Standard Bank, a, a, a building, but you're building. coming to Standard yeah. Bank with people. With people. Yeah. And those people, if you can relate or connect with them at a human level, you may win. Yeah. Yeah. Peach, you may win them over if you connect them at the points where you are connecting, finding that common ground with them and saying, This is my pain point. You find their pain points, yeah, and you 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 add value in solving their pain points. That's where you are able to you know to connect at a at a human at a human uh, level and building those meaningful and purposeful relationships with people. So sure. sometimes in, in connecting and also in networking, it's not about selling. It's about listening to the next person and finding and understanding their pain points and seeing how you can add value, um, how you can add value uh, to, to their pain points and how you can solve those problems, which is one of the uh, uh, critical soft skills that, that is problem solving. Uh, that uh, we could be talking more and more about it. So yeah, <laughs> we hand over. <laughs> All right. To you. Thank you so much, Wendy. And and I don't want to leave our audience behind. I just want to read their comments where they're saying, "I wish young people." This is from Tumesa. She's saying on LinkedIn, "I wish young people would also understand that people in high places um, are not as scary as they are made out to be because they." when they go and attend a networking event, they know whoever is going to speak to them is as nervous. Um, and so they are welcoming as long as you maintain the respect, humility, and the confidence as you address them. Going back to Renee and of course, Wendy, in terms of presenting yourself well, um, and just having that decorum, you know, when, when you actually um, are speaking with, with whoever you are speaking to at networking. Um, Wen Zile has also said that I'm learning a lot from this discussion. And to our guests, I mean, let's wrap up our conversation before now we start talking and having a course on NLP on this Grow Your Brand seminar series. Um, <laughs> but from your guys' perspective, um, and maybe in closing, Wendy, 
you know, what is it that, you know, and, and I think we can't almost speak about entrepreneurship without mentorship. And I say that only because it, it, we use it interchangeably many at times or we use it, um, um, you know, my sister was reminding me that she said one time to me or she asked me about needing and what's the important of importance of, of, of mentorship and you know she was trying to understand what do I do with a mentor and I said to her that the hard work actually comes from you you know um, and, and, and I think also because it's a journey that is unbeknown to many whilst we have many people in it is not the same you know some have a cash flash because of um you know their, their background others need to go out there and fend so the journey of entrepreneurship is never no one can actually say that similar to a chartered accounting degree four years seven years you're done you're accredited it, it is not like that a doctor mm -hmm. seven years you do your residency you're done a lawyer this this and that so 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 why 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 mentorship you know and 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 have you i mean maybe other people are like actually you know what that thing has not worked for me <laughs> um because we almost assume that it, it it is the only way or the right way but what is what is your thoughts on mentorship especially in this journey of entrepreneurship maybe let me go to you wendy again um i think uh, first of all i we have to acknowledge that nobody is born knowing uh, anything so yeah. whatever that we know today we've we've learned it and what we've learned still we can even get better at it and the only way to get better at it is finding people that have you know the experience the years you know the knowledge and who have walked the journey um you, you know before us to be able to show us so that's how i look at mentorship is finding those people who have walked the journey, who've got the years, who've got the experience, and who've got the time, most importantly, because Absolutely. you can, you know, you can look at someone who's, um, you know, an executive somewhere and you say you'd like them to mentor you. Do they have the time? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're putting them in a corner when you're asking them that question and they can't because they're overcommitted. So, it's 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 important when i started my own business uh, it was from that premise exactly to say you know there's a lot of women who are starting businesses and there's a lot of young people who are starting businesses who don't have that someone to show them the ropes and to say this is where you can go for this and this is where you need to go to get the to you know to get funding and actually what is a marketing plan this is what a marketing plan looks like and you know obviously you're doing that because you're doing that on the uh, on the basis of social entrepreneurship and i did that because uh in my own journey i've had that privilege of saying to someone look these are my ideas mm. and i sat down it, it, in my case it was a business coach uh, and not necessarily a mentor which is also a, a difference between the two because a coach will coach you like in in, in athletics they will stand yeah. there, they won't run next to you. They will stand there and say, okay, your target your is life. 100 yeah. kilometers. So you, yeah. you go, you need to train. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you go <laughs> and you run. Yeah. And as opposed to a mentor, a mentor will say, okay, you need to train. This is what you need to eat. This yeah. is what you, you know, I will walk a journey with you. Okay, I know so-and-so uh, at this place. Let me connect to you, to them. This is someone who will walk a journey, handhold. A mentorship is more like a handholding exercise, if, if, if I may put it that way. So having a mentor is, is, is one, is very important, but also choosing the right mentor is equally important uh, because you can choose someone who will take you on a different route where you are not going. And you may choose someone who's, who has similar interests with you and then you share everything you overshare to a point yeah. that you right. see them one day doing exactly what you wanted to do so yeah then <laughs> how how did we get here no. so there's, there's a very fine line even in there so you must be able to be very wise in in, in choosing you know a mentor or choosing someone to mentor you so i would say it's 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 very important it's about learning it's about understanding uh, uh, uh what your needs are and also identifying uh, that person that can hold your hand and walk a journey with you um and who has the time most importantly to to do that 
I love that. Mune, your closing um, words on mentorship. Guys, I think we should have a separate session on mentorship, coaching, coaching sponsorship. And sponsorship. sponsorship. Mm. Okay. I think for me, it starts off with, um, you were talking about, and very important, mentors don't have time, right? And, and this is the mistake that young people normally make when they say, I want a mentor. They think they're going to find somebody who's going to be 24-7 available. No, it doesn't work like that. You are finding somebody who's very busy, somebody who's done what you've already done. They won't invest a lot of time in it, but they'll give you 10 minutes, right? And it's it's just being a bit smart enough to know when uh, to get the right mentor for the right level of where you are in your business, in your life. I think what I've learned is I hope from mentors, right? If I want somebody to mentor me in digital marketing, I'll go and find someone who's good with digital marketing. Hey, I want to do one, two, three. Can you help me a bit? You are not taking a lot of time away from them. It becomes seasonal. And I think for me, I don't like having the conversation about mentorship without a coach, without sponsorship. Because what people do is they go and get a coach. The coach does their job. They train you. You need to go at 100 kilometers. Um, to do these 10 laps, this is the speed you need to maintain. But they leave out a mentor, somebody who's going to be there. Okay, fine. I know you're tired. Let's do it. Let's do it together. I'll be there, you know. And then later on, once the, the race is done or it's won, you need a sponsor. You need somebody who's going to say, okay, fine. Now I believe in you enough that I can introduce you to those key people that can put in money. So for me, speaking about mentorship, it's always about you need to know how to position yourself well enough to access all three. Because you need all three in make sure that because a coach is not going to go and help you get connections the mentor might not get get the funding but a sponsor might not have the time to sit with you and coach you and mentor you but they have the time to say oh okay Munei came through um wendy meaning wendy has done a part she has done a job Munei is ready okay fine let's go let's have a discussion have the funding so for me it's about creating the support system a good support system structure around you to make sure that you thrive. We are human beings at the end of the day. We've got habits that are not healthy. We've got kids that needs to be fed, kids that are shouting, screaming every day. You've got, you've got a job. So you need a support structure around you that will help you to elevate you to where you want to go. And it doesn't have to be one person because one person won't have all the time to do that for you. So for me, uh, when you speak entrepreneurship, it's also about aftercare. Who's doing the aftercare, right? Mm. Everybody does training. And I think we've got enough institutions in the country that are doing training. But now, I think when it comes to the aftercare part, we need to make sure that entrepreneurs are getting the right coaches or seeing the value of having a coach. Because, I mean, it also comes with the cost at some point, right? Um, entrepreneurs know how to um, search for and find the right mentors. And mentorship doesn't mean that they need to be there in your journey for 10 years. They can be there for two weeks and that's all they need to be there for. And mm -hmm. then get yourself a sponsor, somebody who's going to make sure that whatever that you are doing, whatever that you are trying to, um, to initiate comes to fruition by making sure that they sponsor you. And sponsorship is not only about money. It's also about platforms, right? In this instance, Wendy and I are sponsored by Mbumi to be in this platform, right? So that's how you need to see relationships, you know? So I think it's very important for young people to know how to build support structures to make sure that they thrive and they succeed. We have come to the end of, of our session and you guys have spoken. I'm, I myself clearly need to go and... Uh, and 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 go in and make sure that my soft skills are to date um you know we've spoken about communication and and we didn't touch on them because i think they're all quite meaty um we know we did mm -hmm. touch on networking which also can be quite a big um like a far away soft skill so we wanted to bring it closer to home to say what is it that one would need to do it is about going to those networking events having intentional relationships and planning and scoping your room i think one thing that we also didn't maybe double click on that wendy mentioned is that i am very much aware when i go to an event who's there you know we sometimes are say yes 
as if we're going, but there's no sense of planning to understand and, and nothing terribly hectic, uh, but it's you to make sure you're understanding who's coming there. You know, you then figure out, okay, it's the president. Ah, I didn't know. I'm unprepared, underprepared, you know, um, just because there was no intent um, when you were planning on going to such events and so forth. So it's about showing up and showing well, which I think are most of um, what you've said along the whole um, almost 55 minutes. Thank you so much to yourself, Wendy, and to yourself, Monet. Where can people get um, to, to, to contact you? I do see that Kumisa is like, listen here. Um, will you share an email address <laughs> and contact you through? <laughs> You're not obligated to, but maybe please let us know where they can find you on social media, I suppose, if, if that is a bit more private. Otherwise, then maybe we can ask Kumisa to send her email to info at top16yoba.co.za and I suppose then we can share more personal uh, email addresses on that on that platform. But where do we find you? Where do we find Mune? Where do we find Wendy? You can um, find me on... Oh, so you can go ahead. No, no, go in. Go in. You can find me on LinkedIn. That's the easiest. I always say LinkedIn is always the best. Um, I'm Wendy Silingana. You can, you know, you don't DM there. You can send me a message. <laughs> <laughs> right with the core of yeah. guys <laughs> yeah you can send me a message you know you don't dm at linkedin <laughs> so you send a message don't you can dm DMs. me on <laughs> on ig um at when's bless uh that's my handle on ig and on facebook as well i am at when's bless so oh wendy wendy blessing so you can find me on both on the three platforms so that's it Kumisa, this is all for you, my dear. Please, that's where you can find. And because you're speaking um, or messaging us from LinkedIn, please make sure to link in Wendy Silignana, as she's mentioned. She said thank you very much. And yourself, Mune? Look, uh, I'll be very honest. I'm there on Facebook. I'm there on Twitter. I'm there on Instagram, but you won't find me. But so you which one find are you find findable on? LinkedIn. Okay. LinkedIn, you find me... You, you in message me i'll definitely respond i'm very uh, the nature of my job is in linkedin so in business development so you message me there i'll think you are a contact and i'll respond so if you want to connect with me linkedin is the place to go maybe i think Next for those week. who want to connect connect with our guests you must you must have listened to this whole thing so that you can drop a gem so they'll be like oh it's from the grow it's your brand series episode uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much to our guests um i've enjoyed this um they've said thank you so much shanice um shanice says thank you so much um i've enjoyed the session again i was hijacked um but it was a good um an amazing conversation and i think a much needed one i never think we can have enough of these conversations um one it is maybe you're hearing for the first time otherwise two it is a reminder of this beautiful journey of entrepreneurship um it is i think we sometimes especially month end uh, you focus probably on the on the on the pain of of how your bank account looks like but it is a journey and and it is to be enjoyed and to our guests who are listening to us on any and all the platforms from facebook linkedin and youtube please make sure that you have voted today is the last day for voting for our nominations um this is a a series that is brought to you by top 16 youth owned brands awards 2023 where we're having the nominees our youth owned brands who have been nominated 64 of them across 16 categories will definitely um, take the cup, as they say in, in soccer, uh, taking the cup on the 15th of June um, at the Santon Convention Center. Uh, but we also this year, we have a festival or others know it as an exhibition where there's entertainment and there is our exhibitors, which is actually having a shopping mall of these youth owned brands. So we're gonna have these youth owned brands where you can walk around, engage, interact with them, get to know what they're selling, whether it is a service, whether it is a product, um, you'll get to trial and test and have conversations with these amazing youth owned brands. So make sure to get your tickets. Um, you can go to web tickets, otherwise you can go to www.top16yoba.co.za to get your ticket for either one day, full day, which is two days, otherwise two days, including the awards. So there's three types of categories of tickets. 
So voting today, getting your tickets. Um, we have our keynote speaker that we've dropped, our joker. Um, it is Me Mamocheti, um, who will be there as our keynote speaker. Um, so we're super excited for Mema Mocheti. For those that who don't know Mema Mocheti, where have you been? You've been under a rock. <laughs> um, <laughs> so do stay tuned. We'll be you dropping the entertainment lineup, the master classes and the speakers, who to expect. So definitely if you go to top16yoba.co.za, the team is working tirelessly to make sure that they bring an amazing and a show-stopping event for the 14th and the 15th of June at the Santin Convention Center. From myself, Unum Pumelelo, I'm going to say goodbye. And to our guests, thank you once again for joining us and sharing. And be on our last and final episode of the webinar. It has been an thank honor. Thank you for me. Thank you. Good thank night, you everybody. Me. And cheers. Enjoy your Bye. Cheers. Bye.